Hello again, YouTube. I know it's been a little over a month, and this time we're not going to be talking about shoes, but rather uh, training uh, for the Grand Walls Marathon. So thank you for your patience, and um, appreciate each and every one of you that are tuning in right now. Uh, the whole idea for this video is just to go over some of the training that I was implementing with my coach Kyle Hefner for kind of a you know combo action here, looking at Grand Walls, and then keep building a big base into the Indy Monument marathon that's uh, at the very end of October. So I did go back to working with uh, Coach Kyle and the reason why I picked him is he's local to me and then he very much fits the ethos um, of higher running as I'm a coach for them and just the way he you know approaches being a human being with the training his um, very affable caring character and of course all his knowledge and background it just meant like it, was, it would be a good fit for me. So that was the long and the short of it. So February 2023, about midway through the month, we paired back up and then we discussed kind of what can we do now that I'm in my mid thirties trying to maybe go for the OTQ or a 240. I, I just don't know if the OTQs um, on the cards an OTQ means Olympic trials qualifier and that two hours and 37 minute time is uh, pretty quick for a marathon. Either way, we're trying to just see where I can go, what I can do, and just try to get a good performance regardless of what the clock is. I'm gonna remember the training and the hanging on to a goal probably more than I'm gonna remember a time. Although, getting the OTQ would be, be real nice, and that might be the indie project. Anyway, so back to when we started working in mid-February, we kind of sat down and discussed how, how do we um, create a physiologic change? What have I not done in the years past? What can we build on? And how do we make that blend with my very unique work schedule? I Not unique in the sense of no one does shift work, but in the sense of it's hard to blend um, high mileage, triple digit miles per week with 12 hour shifts. And the way 12 hour shifts work is you have one week that's kind of a big week. So five by 12 hour shifts, so 60 hour work week. And then you get a little bit rewarded with a shorter work week so almost half the shifts. And it just goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth between those uh, two weeks. So the training kind of has to fit around that. And then something else Coach Kyle likes to do is what's, for all intents and purposes, we'll call high-low approach. He thinks that it's a good idea to do a high week of mileage and then followed by more of a moderate week. So you're still training, you're still doing pretty high mileage on both, it's just, it oscillates. And the idea is you're still continuing the workout, but you're also um, creating like mini recoveries, just small little adaptations. You overextend just a little bit, and then you come back to just below what would be comfortable mileage for you. Say if you were a person that could run 100 miles a week, just, just for example, or if it's 50 miles a week, you would maybe go 110 or 55, and then back it down to 85 or 45, depending on um, which mileage suits your training the best. And also don't forget to think of, to think of things in time. So one mile is gonna be a completely different pace than the next person. So you always could think of, well, okay, 10 hours of running this week, 11 next week, nine, 11, nine, 11 and a half, nine and a half, so on and so forth. So we had to get these built around my 12 hour shifts. And so one way kind of has a traditional split of, you know, maybe easy on a Monday, we do a workout on Tuesday, you know, easy, easy, maybe some strides here and there, and then hit a long run on Saturday and a more easy, you know, laid back Sunday. The antithesis to that is having to cram more work into two days because if I'm off on Wednesday and Thursday, there's only real two days I have to play with because getting a lot of mileage and working 12 hours <laughs> doesn't work very well. So Wednesday would be a workout and then like a long easy on Thursday. And then the rest of the time I'm really just noodling along and covering ground, just getting mileage in there. Because aerobic development, it can be done at an easy pace. You don't have to always be running, you know, at marathon pace. You should um, definitely have eased uh, back some runs, recovery runs, maybe some moderate runs and then intense workouts. You always need to protect your intense workouts and then you need to properly uh, recover and adapt to them because if you're always constantly in a gray zone of running essentially, like just a little too fast to be recovery and not fast enough to be efficacious to produce a training stimulus, then you really are gonna be spinning your wheels. And obviously no one wants to do that, myself included. So if I can 
run lower sixes for a marathon pace, my recovery runs are still, give or take, eight minute pace or slower, like mid eights, low eights, things like that, a uh, minute per mile pace. So we started doing that in February, high, low, high, low, high, low. And the mileage just kind of increased until it didn't. Then we wanted to kind of plateau the mileage. So we hit the mileage kind of early on in the block to just build a really big aerobic base. And there wasn't a whole lot of workout to it. It was just a lot of zone two running, if you will. And just get, get, the, get the volume laid out and then throw in the tempo. But with increased workload, we, we wanted to bring down the mileage because you can't have everything. You know, like to use a car for an analogy, it will accelerate really well for you, it'll brake really well for you, or it'll turn really well for you. But to try to combine all three and ask the car to do all that at once, it can't. So the same idea of how many levers are you gonna move forward at any given time when you're uh, structuring your training plan, just be careful not to be moving too many levers at once. Don't, don't underestimate um, like three things versus one thing, and you don't know, wanna create over fatigue because it won't pop up on your first time you do that. It could be four, five, six down, weeks down the road then you realize, oops. So that's basically the gist of the base of it. So we're gonna switch over to now kind of like a screen grab shot of my Strava, and that's going to explain a little bit of kind of week by week. And I'll just basically just kind of click through there so you have an idea of where it went high and low, high and low. Okay, fam, here we are. We are now in my Strava um, account. And the reason why I brought you over here is to show you the kind of that up-down approach. So this is, you know, only 12 weeks that it'll show in these dots here as I click through. And that's just how Strava lays out. But obviously this is back here, week March 13 through 19. I've been working with Kyle for almost a month before that. So the graph actually goes high, low, high, low before all that. But these uh, actually are my two biggest weeks as I keep clicking back and forth there. That, those 130s um, or in time, basically 17 hours of running. But if I click in between there, you can see that the mileage is obviously lower between them. So back here, week March 13 through 19, uh, that would be a reduced workload, like work week. So more running. My busier work week, less running, more running, less running, so on and so forth. But as I click through, you can see the mileage kind of just starts dropping and kind of the, the ups and downs are a little bit less notable because the volume is dropping. Let me click back here to the 17th through the 23rd. That's kind of where the physiologic symptoms started to really present. Actually, it was back here a little bit um, towards the back end of this week into this week, March 17th through 23rd, where I noticed that that rebound hypoglycemia kind of some issues with some um, hormones that are covered a little bit um, later on in this video, if you want to stay tuned to that, because everything's not rosy. But I wanted to show again, like I said, the, uh, the volume here. So in a week like this, this up week, I would do a workout generally on Monday or Tuesday, and then the long run on Saturday, and then uh, recovery everything else in between. Then a lower week like this, we condense it into a uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and then the rest of the time is just chill. And then so on and so forth. But on the day I recorded this, it was uh, Wednesday, May 31st, just to give you an idea of what the plan is. So this was a workout slightly changed for humidity. I'll go ahead and click into it. This is just a little bit of marathon tempo type of um, workout, six by one mile, six by one minute. Obviously the one minutes are supposed to be faster than the one mile, so I'll scroll down here, view workout, and there's the splits warm up, warm up, warm up, and then hit it, recover, uh, gra grab a drink in periodically. The rest tended to be 75 to 90 seconds, not 52. That was just my moving time, like slow jog to the water. Interval, 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 faster stuff, faster stuff, faster stuff, cool down, cool down, henceforth and so on. So the idea of showing you that is because tomorrow I will try to run two hours and 45 minutes, nice and easy, just get some of that endurance stimulus. And then basically from there, it's almost shut it down, uh, bring the volume down a little bit, keep the workouts going a bit, but start bringing that volume down for grandmas. So now we're going to segue back into closing out this video. 
And so for this final part, um, I hope you guys are still here. Um, I, I did want to, you know, come back out of that Strava view uh, and to do the, a, um, the last part, if you will, a little more face-to-face, because -face, um, this is the part I don't, I'm not always the most comfortable talking about, is I don't, you know, like to talk about struggles too much, and, you know, that's a lot of people might be like that with athletes they just want to show when they're having a good time and when life is good, and that might be to protect their own mindset, maybe their ego, or just to not burden somebody else or make them feel, you know, stressed out by seeing, oh, my favorite runner is now having a hard time and it bums you out. But this is also the reality of training and maybe just, you know, a better euphemism for life is we will be presented with challenges. We must enjoy our running and protect anything that makes us happy as um, healthy outlets and, you know, part of living your life. But we also know that everything is just like that. It's a part and every little piece needs to come together. So sometimes you need to know when to press and just to go for something. And sometimes maybe when you have to fold it a little bit and, and play your card, play your hand the next, next round. And life isn't at the end of your nose, it's out here. So if you have anything with um, health concerns, um, mental health concerns, stressors, this just isn't a good time right now. And it could be for the most wonderful of things. If you have welcomed a new child into your family, adopted a child, getting a new pet even, moving, new career, those aren't long lasting, this is forever, I must now change my life, I can never press for a goal again. You know, it's, it's easy to just get into this disastrous forever mindset almost. And when you realize, no, this is just a period of time in my life, and I have to kind of just share and know when, okay, maybe this time right now isn't, but I'll still do a little bit of work just to stay in a base amount of fitness and then kick that on over to the next goal and your, your mind will be stronger for it. So don't give up on something that you want or you, you thought of doing just because right now is not good. It might be okay next time. So anyway, some of the challenges I had with that, um, particularly in the last month, some of you that know what I do for a living probably already know what I mean. And if you don't, you probably get a better idea if you go to my social media sites. I do have them open. You can probably put two and two together and figure out maybe what I do for the other career and why there's been some stressors. So there's just, there was three main big things that happened in a about a three week span of time. And I am but a human being, like all the other human beings, particularly in the first event, it stresses your body out. And I already had increased workload and trying to balance everything as I'm a go, go, go until I crash kind of person. And I had just gotten some blood work done about 45 days ago, maybe, give or take. And some of the hormone markers were absolutely terrible and cortisol levels were very, very low. Like my AM cortisol levels are what PM cortisol levels should be, um, which is adrenal insufficiency. So if you keep chronically stressing your body out, it'll finally just throw its hands up in the air and go, well, I guess cortisol is not working when it's supposed to. You want cortisol levels to be high, low, high, low as you respond to stressors. And kind of one of the issues I was having with some of my training in the second half of April, it's where it presented some symptom, was a rebound hypoglycemia problem where I would eat a little bit of something and then go run and my blood sugar levels would just crater to the point of like my body felt detached from my mind and I would get dizzy and I would just try to get back to the car, get a hold of some sugar and get back to work. Now. I've actually made some of that better. I feel like in the last about two weeks, I've, I gained back some ground. Same with some other, basically all the steroid hormone that your body produces, all my levels are messed up to some degree. And the only way that's gonna kind of fix and repair is with an extended break. I'm stuck in a situation of I'm now two and a half weeks out from grandma's and I'm doing everything I can to mitigate work stress, but time is now and things have to get done. So. That leads me to what do I have control of right now? I have my mind. And the best I can do is just accept something sucks and reframe something in my mind and just literally one foot in front of the other. Don't overthink it. Just get through the day. Be thankful for what you have. I live, generally speaking, in a good area. I make a comfortable living. 
I have a lot to be thankful for, so I'll just circle back and be thankful for what I have. Grandma's is time goal wise, I have definitely back burnered that. I have still 240 in my mind, barring weather or travel issues. I also know that if one more slight thing rocks in my work, um, that PTO time will be revoked even though I've paid all my money. There's a possibility I may not even get to go to grandma's. That being said, I'm going to say this with the glass half full and say I am going to get to go to grandma's and uh, enjoy my day there and be thankful that I made it to the start line. I'll take to the start and then I will run through the course the best that I feel I can race and I will try to produce a good effort that is representative of my fitness. And so even though I've had some struggles and I'm having to run tired sometimes and I shouldn't be doing all that and I certainly would not want any of my athletes <laughs> feeling like they need to struggle to achieve a goal and you know that's something that maybe internally I need to check with myself to say it's okay not to full bore everything like I do and some of that is I just like to experiment and tinker where is a line in the sand what what can you do and get away with and be okay so you know when you're making an excuse for yourself and you know when no I really need a break and so sometimes just being your own guinea pig before you try to coach and guide others is not always a bad idea because I'm never going to ask somebody to do something that I couldn't conceptualize doing if I was in their situation. It's not fair. It's not fair to me as a coach and it's certainly not fair to the athlete that is putting their whole um, goals potentially into the coach's hands. And so I feel like, you know, happiness and healthiness of an athlete always has to come first. So the struggles definitely um, just the, the chronic fatigue, you know, you can think, okay, I have work stress, I have running stress, and those two are separate, but please don't forget you have one central nervous system and one, you know, body, you have one set of hormones that get produced out of it. You just, you, you are but one person and you cannot compartmentalize the two. You should separate the two in a certain sense of like setting healthy boundaries, but they, but you are but one person. And it started to take its toll and my hormone levels kind of came back down and with some better fueling strategies they're actually coming back up things are, are looking good so again like to the back to the uh going back to the beginning of the video it's not forever so i will do the best i can to get through grandma's and be thankful for whatever happens if i run three hours and 30 minutes because i pulled the plug and cruised or i run two hours and 40 minutes because i just happened to be blessed with a good day Either way, it's good to go, come back, take a little break, and then we'll see what we can do for Indy and, and just keep plucking away. Because, you know, you know, the times may or may not work out. Um, this may not be the right time and place for me for these goals. Maybe it's next year. But anyway, I wanted to at least conclude with the um, kind of the struggles, but I did want to try to put a positive light on that before I signed out, um, you know, just Take things one day at a time, you know, assess where you are in life. Is this a goal that you can achieve now or should you wait a little bit? And of course, you know, let's let's interact with one another. If you if you've been in a situation or you have to juggle like extensive shift work, have a family, anything like that, and and you have a perspective you want to share, um, for me, for, for our followers, please uh, interact in the comments. Uh, and if you, of course, if you have any questions, do let me know. Um, I do love feedback and the interaction. Again, thank you all for been tuning in and watching and being supportive. It's been uh, very, very appreciated. And I definitely look forward to making more content for you guys. Until next time, take care.